So this is the traditional cathedral window quilt square. It's made up of many pieces. To start your block, you need an 8-inch square foundation block that gets sewn into what ends up being a 5.5-inch uh, block. And then your centers are 2 and a quarter inch colored scraps of fabric, 2 and a quarter inch squares. And so might I add, if you don't like to hand stitch, then this might not be the quilt block for you. So to get started, you need a lot of 8-inch squares. Then you need some strips of fabric, all different colors, that are 2 and a quarter inches. Those strips get cut into 2 and a quarter inch squares of many different colors. You need a needle and thread, and that's about it. If you're going to do the entire block by hand, I suggest putting your feet up and getting really comfy. And then you're going to stitch both of the short ends just a quarter an inch from the edge. I have one done by machine here. My edges are already stitched. Once the edges are stitched, you're going to take this little, it's like a pocket, you're going to open it up, and you're going to pull. And then you're going to match up your center seam. The seam allowance gets pressed in one direction on one side and the opposite direction on the other side. I just finger press it. Then you're going to stitch the entire raw edge again from the corner to the center. Then you're going to go a little bit past the center and you're going to stop with a couple back tacks. You're going to leave an opening. You're going to do a couple more back tacks and then you're going to sew right off the end. And when you've done that, you end up with some blocks that look like this. They're kind of puffy and they have an opening in them. Right here. You take that opening, and now it's time to turn your blocks right side out. So I put my thumb in, and I get my finger going, and I push my finger through that little hole, and then I kind of just weasel the rest of it right out of that little hole, and I turn it right side out. You can encourage the points to be pointier by using the tip of your scissors, but don't push too hard because you don't want you don't want to put a hole. And just pop those points right out. And when it's all turned right side out, you have one that's done. You iron it flat, and you end up with a block that looks like this, nice and pressed flat. This is our first foundation piece. Now, in order to attach them together to each other, you take foundation pieces and you press the corners to the center to give yourself a little crease. Now you can do that with an iron or you can just finger press it. I use a little wooden roller. It's like a screen printing roller. You can get it in a craft store. To put them together, you take two of them that are creased and you put them with the right sides together. This is the side that you don't see the stitching, the seam on. So the right sides together. You match up the squares, and then all you do is sew along that little creased seam that you made. I've got an example here where I started off doing the whole thing by hand. And when you look at the back, you can see it's kind of wonky. Then I started adding these rows by machine, and when you look at the back, it's much neater. So I suggest machine piecing this. When you want to add a row, you take your entire row that you made, and you do those creases on the edge that you're going to attach to your quilt. So I've already pre-creased these and I've got my quilt here, and now I want to add it to the quilt. So I'm going to match my points up with points. I'm going to fold them up. Once, once they're uh, 
matched up nicely. Just one pin. Go to the next point, same thing. I'm going to match it up. And your rows could be 10 or 12 or 20 of these little blocks. However long you want to do it. This is a short one. It's five rows. So they're all matched up. Now I'm just going to stitch along that nice crease that I have to add my row. Make sure you back tack at the beginning and end. You don't want that coming loose. Make sure your points are open in case you end up tacking that down a little bit. You have to have a pretty sturdy machine. You're going through a lot of layers. And you can pop the pins out, and you've got yourself a nice row. Once you get the rows put on, you go in and you tack together the four points of each one of these little groups. And that centerpiece with the four points, once it's tacked together, it's held nice and firm. And so then you're able to manipulate the the color the edges around the color so what I mean by tacking them down I'm going to show you um, I take my my little triangles and I put them towards the center of the square and I'm just gonna take my thread it has a knot at the end of it and I'm going to bring it inside here where the knot is going to hide on the seam in the middle of the triangle and I put my needle so that it comes out of the point And I'm going to grab the opposite little triangle, and I'm just going to take a stitch between the two. And another one. Just to hold it firmly in place. And then I'm going to grab the other opposite triangle and bring that up to the group. And this one, and bring it to the group. You just need a tiny little stitch in the point of the triangle. And I'm going to stitch those two again. And that holds them securely in their place. Now I'm going to knot the thread by taking a stitch, putting my needle through the loop, Make sure it's nice and tight, put it through the loop again. And once I get that knot in there, I like to hide the end of the thread inside on the seam. And I just go down a little ways, take a stitch, and then I can trim it off right there. Now those four are hold, held together nicely. When I get them all tacked down, the next step is to put one of my little squares on top of the square that I made. I like to pin it in place just to hold it nice and secure. And I pin it in the middle because I'm not stitching the middle, I'm only stitching the edges. And then I take my thread, I put a big knot on the end of the thread, and I start inside underneath where you're not going to see the knot. And I, I come between the layers of fabric and I come out right on the edge of the fold. And I make sure that I don't go through the back. I don't want to see any stitching on the back. And now that knot's hid in there. And then I have to fold this down and at this point, that's the bias edge on the square, the bias fold. So I just pinch it down where it needs to be. And my thread has come out here so that I can 
start blind stitching it down. You could stitch it down by machine. It would go all the way through all the layers to the back. Um, it would leave a, a rounded quilting pattern on the back actually. It might, it might look pretty good. I just love to hand stitch. So I'm blind stitching these down. And you just do it all the way around, all four sides. And I've got my finger down in there. Um, and I'm not going through the very, very back layer. I'm just going through the stuff that's floating on the top. I'm about to drive from Miami to Boston with my sister. And when I'm not driving and she is, I think this is a perfect little project to have in my lap. Keep myself busy. So when I get to the corner, I like to start folding down my next side so that I can match up my points. And I take a stitch in one side and then I go in the other side in a fold and take another stitch. And I go back in the first side. And I start heading in the direction that's going to go down here. When I pull that nice and tight, my point is all stitched shut. Now I'm going to go back in the other side. And then I start going into the color and see how nice my point is all stitched shut. And I'm doing a nice blind stitch so that you don't see the stitches at all. So it doesn't really matter what color you use, but I use white because my back ground squares are white. And now I find myself right back at the beginning again. I've gone all the way around all four sides. So now I just have to stitch these, this little point together in the corner. And I'll do that by coming across. I'm going back over to the first one. I'm coming across. And I find myself right in the point where I can start the next square. 